this video is going to be the death of me. First, the microphone fell on the floor, had a heart attack. I won't know until post pro if it even works. Then the camera shut off. Then the microphone wasn't even recording when I was talking. Here we go. Either it's not meant to be, or I'm just having one of them days. Hey loves, it's A back on your screen with another one. I hope you're all well. In this one, I wanted to do a quick story time of how I found out I was literally blind. I'm gonna break this into three parts. The first is how I found out I had this eye disease. The second is what I saw that let me know it was time to get my eyes checked. And three, what I see nowadays. I know I let you guys know in the weekly vlogs, oh, my vision got worse, but I never really break it down on what I see and how I know it got worse. So I'm putting it all in this video. Let's go. Part one, how did I find out I was legally blind? <laughs> Let's take it back. Let's start from the beginning. How I found out I had Stargardt's disease. I was 19, learning how to drive, struggling. I felt like I wasn't confident because I couldn't see quite as clearly as I thought I needed to. I had glasses when I was a preteen, but I stopped wearing them. I was self-conscious. Plus, I had to do the whole patch over the right to strengthen the left thing, and it worked. I could see perfectly for a few years. So I thought maybe I just need to do that again with a new prescription. I went, I got my eyes checked. They gave me a prescription for contact lenses, but they also referred me to a specialist. This specialist, Dr. Samani, one of the best in the cities, was the first to say the term Stargardt's disease. You know me, I'm sure you're the same. Whenever a doctor tells you a diagnosis or says something, you get Dr. Google and you research that. When I looked, I said, I mean, I have that, don't put that on me. I was in a stage of denial. If you wanna know more about the emotional side, you can click here, but to keep this video streamlined, let's just talk about the signs. So I remember that was one of my first visits with a specialist. I saw six other specialists that year, but it wasn't until I went to sick kids and got a blood test to test my DNA for the ABC A4 gene that they confirmed officially that I had Stargardt's disease. The travesty, your girl was still in denial back then. One of the moments that sticks out to me the most between the DNA test and seeing Dr. Samani is when I went to the Oslem Center, William Oslem, some kind of hospital in Brampton, it's far away. By the way, all these doctor visits were missions, at least an hour or more to get to see these specialists. It's as if they all chose to be positioned at opposite ends of the city. So I would mission to go to these tests one of these tests, the one in Brampton, they did three tests in one day, so I was there all day. One of the tests, they injected ink into my blood system. I was peeing in neon green, Ninja Turtle green for three days. And that allowed them to see the back of my eyes because it was dyed and photograph the damage. Even earlier that year, which would have been 2009, when Dr. Samani said Stargardt's disease, he said it's because the back looks malleated. Think of a steel pan, you know, when you hit the drum and it looks a little beaten. That's what the back of my eye looked like, and that's not a good look. When they took the photos of the test, I don't know, like they always show you the results, but you don't know what's happening. You could just see, oh, this is what a healthy eye looks like, and this is what your eye looks like. And you're like, oh, I guess it's diseased. So that's pretty much how I found out that I would be legally blind because I had this eye disease. Part two are the signs that I saw, which were pretty much the same as being nearsighted. I could tell that when I was looking at something in the distance, I had to squint or strain to see. Textbooks were starting to look a little hazy. A lot of people say it's like 720 to 1080p. I wouldn't say that. It's not that it's blurry. It's just some things that I look directly at don't exist. Like this, my camera, it's a silhouette. But if I look over here, I can tell more it's a camera than I look directly at it, where they do that at. It's so annoying. But even though I look over here, it's not like I can suddenly see myself in the viewfinder. How do I even describe this? It's so weird to me. How am I supposed to explain it to you? When I look directly at something because the cells have died, it's, it's almost like there's negative space. But when I look away because my peripherals are doing most of the work anyway, I can see it more clearly. But because the peripheral cells aren't for detail or telling things, it's never gonna be as sharp as looking at directly at things. Peripheral cells are not responsible for seeing things crisp and sharp, details and color. Things will never be the same as if you were to look directly at something. If you have no eye disease and you can see 2020, try looking at something at the corner of your eye. And that's how I look at something directly or at the side. I'm always using my peripheral. Sometimes I might look a little off because I'm trying to use the part of my eyes that haven't died to try to see what I'm looking at. It doesn't really do much these days. The other signs are that even when you wear glasses or contacts, they don't help. Glasses stop working around the two year mark. 
Even with the prisms that reflected the light, the part of my eye that it hadn't died yet stopped working. I have to zoom in with my iPhone and I zoom in more over time to the point where I've maxed out the zoom, I've maxed out the font, I use voice to text to respond to my friends. I'm editing super zoomed in when I'm using Final Cut Pro. I can't see my keyboard anymore, which is why there's typos on typos. But I've memorized the keyboard shortcuts I need to make things happen more seamlessly. Let's just do a speed round of all the things I can no longer see. Books, obviously, my camera, my Mac, unless it's zoomed in, the keyboard, as I mentioned, price tags, street signs, aisles and stores, menus, menu boards, door numbers, the dials on the stove, food when it's cooking, food when I'm cutting. <laughs> wow, this list is a lot longer than I thought. My reflection, people approaching me, laptop screens, elevator buttons, even the keyhole. Sometimes I have to move the key to actually fit it in. Time on the microwave or the stove, price on the cash register, receipts, money, the pin pad when it's time to pay, ATMs, digital dials like changing a thermostat, settings on any kind of tech, whether it's my microphone, my computer, an iPad, I always gotta zoom in or use my phone to take a picture of the menu and then switch things. Crumbs on a countertop, which is why I wipe, 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 and then feel to make sure it's gone. My hair out of place, mascara running down my face, my brow hairs. <laughs> I've mistaken skunks for pets, not fun. Airport terminals, airport seats, bus numbers, bus stops buffets or when someone puts out a security board. I don't know what I'm eating until I pick it up. Packages, labels, instructions, directions, anything you need to read or see, I can't see at all. Instagram, TikTok doesn't even zoom in. Can't see facial expressions unless someone's sitting right next to me. Can't see wrinkles, acne, scarring, expressions, anything. Numbers, so at one of my past jobs, I was mixing up the three, sixes, and eights because they all look the same. Forms you need to fill out at like doctor's offices, that type of thing. That was a long ass list. Part three, how do I know I'm losing vision nowadays? Pretty much when I have to depend on zooming in more or I've maxed out a function or I just can't see. Just like when I was not allowed to drive anymore, I wasn't able to read a book anymore. It's the same thing with little things. If I were to sit here, my vlogs would be complaints all day of all the things I've suddenly not been able to do or see anymore. So instead of doing that, I just tell you guys I've lost vision. But pretty much, like I said, with that whole long speed round list, those are all the things I can no longer see. And it just gets worse to a degree. Not daily, it's not that bad, but I definitely notice on a monthly basis. It used to be semi-annually. Every month lately, I've been noticing it's been getting worse and worse and worse. To the point where it's like, wow, did it really always take me this long to edit a YouTube video? Or wow, I can't believe I can't see this person sitting across from them at the table or this movie that's playing on the laptop. Painting my nails is a no, I just had to let it go. Another thing I've noticed are flickers and floaters. Floaters are actually a scientific term for when I think part of your eye disengages, so you start to see these little pieces. They look like clear little worms floating, hence why they're called floaters. Then flickers, think of the flash when you have flash from a camera and your eyes flicker afterwards. That happens for hours, it's annoying. But those are the two times where I'm like, yeah, my vision's getting worse. Or when I wake up and I can just tell that things are just not the way they used to be. I can't see color quite as clearly. It takes me a while to adjust to the dark. That's how I know nowadays that my vision is playing with me. So I'm gonna wrap it up with one more quick story because I think I want to tie this up with a pretty little bow. You know how I do, Princess of Positivity. So a few years ago, who am I playing? This is almost a decade ago. I did a study with the University of I don't know what. They came from England here. They tested a bunch of people at Stargards, including me. And I remember when they did their initial eye test to see what the eye disease was saying. <gasps> How did you get here? I said, I took the TCC, what do you mean? One of the tests they did was they put you in a dimly lit room with all these tiny discs that looked like MAC eyeshadows, black with a little pigment in the middle. And you had 30 of these, 10 pink, 10 green, 10 blue in a gradient. They mix it all up and you're supposed to do from light to dark or dark to light, but whatever it was. And I did that with the swiftness. When I came out, they're like, oh wow. I'm like, what's with all the oh wows? First, oh wow for me getting here on my own. Now, oh wow for matching the color. I didn't know back then that Stargirl's disease affects your cones, which affects your color perception. 
So technically, with the amount of deterioration I had back then, which was way better than I have today, I shouldn't have been able to distinguish colors that way. And I was able to do it perfectly. Nowadays, sometimes I'm like, is that the right? No, I don't think so. I have to zoom in and I'm still having a hard time. What that made me realize that I wanted to share with you to wrap up this video is a lot of how we perceive the world and see things is mentally. I didn't give myself the permission to really accept the eye disease at that point. So it didn't affect me and limit me the way it would have if I had sat with this prognosis. If I was like, okay, I'm gonna be legally blind and this is what it is, I think I would have had a harder time living back then because I would have accepted to one point what I was going through, but I would have also foreshadowed. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, the way I see it is, this guy has seen hundreds of people with eyes like mine. For him to be astounded that I got there on my own back then, and I'm still independent today, lets me know that I've been able to overcome what to the scientific eye shouldn't be possible. I can still set up this camera, maybe it's not all perfect or in focus every time, but I still do it because I'm not letting this disease take more than it has already from me. And I want that to be the message I share with you. It is hard, no matter what stage and phase you are at with Star Wars disease, it's gonna be hard. But I want you to do your best to effort to not let it take and overcome you. Trust me, it really tries me. Last week's vlog sucked because I was in such a mood about all the things I could no longer do thanks to this eye disease. But I always have to pick myself up and decide for myself that I need to still do what I can even though my vision is worsening. I'm just grateful that I still have enough vision to live independently and do what I need to do. And I hope the same for you. So if you guys enjoy this video, let me know by hitting the like button, comment down below. And until next time, stay safe, stay sane, stay blessed. Love and later.